I'm going to teach you how to create amazing realism using airbrush textures on the leopard. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add white into our airbrush and we're going to thin it out at around 15%. Now come on, let's have some fun. All I'm doing here is going in with the white and airbrushing all of the hair textures that I can see on my reference. Here's one common problem that I get and you may also get when airbrushing. It's called free flowing. It's when you're painting and the paint decides it wants to come out by itself without you pulling the trigger back. Son of a bitch. It's because something is stuck in the tip of your airbrush. Don't panic, it's an easy fix. Just going to loosen my needle chuck, hold down on the trigger and give it one or two good flushes. <laughs> problem solved. If you see that the fur is moving in this general direction, don't do every stroke in the same direction. You want to create that direction with some strokes going this way and some strokes going that way. I'm using the reference as a rough guide for where to create the most prominent detail in the eye. your airbrush texture with the white, don't feel that you have to cover everything, you really don't. In areas such as this, use the shapes that are already there as a guide for where to put the white paint. Alright, so we've gone over the entire artwork with the white texture, so let's load the original black paint into our airbrush and we're going to re-establish all of the darker shapes and add any detail that we couldn't add with the white. Which is the right voice to follow? Which is Looking pretty good. So as a final step with our black color, I'm going to go over the entire artwork and add any textures that I feel are necessary to make it look better. Okay, can you guess what the last thing to do is? That's right, the whiskers. Put a bit of 100% white in there, not thin down at all, and hit these whiskers in one shot. And that's how to airbrush the leopard.